Hey guys, this is Brian from thetruthaboutwatches.com here today with a review of the Timex E-Instruments Tide Temp and Compass watch. Uh, this is probably one of the coolest looking watches that I own and uh, even though it's a Timex and I normally wouldn't catch myself dead wearing a Timex, this one is extremely cool. Uh, let's go over some basic features real quick. It's a quartz movement as you can see here. Uh, I'll just be honest with you guys because it bothers me. <laughs> the uh, quartz second hand is just really not even close. Uh, there's a couple times on the dial where it lines up, but in general it's it's really off of the markers. Uh, I'm only willing to forgive that on this watch because of how cool it is outside of that. Uh, the bezel, real quick, is a bi-directional bezel with no clicks. It's just made for using the map. Uh, the case is pretty, pretty big. Um, I'd say it's somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, maybe uh, Seiko Orange Monster as far as uh, overall weight and thickness goes. I think the Monster is probably a little bit thicker. but uh, And here you can see the three pushers on this side. And the case back is a snap down. I really don't care for that. But again, I, I've been willing to forgive a lot of shortcomings on this watch for how cool it is. This band, if I can show you here, is silicone, and it will basically do anything you want it to do. It's incredibly uh, just soft and flexible. Makes this watch super comfortable to wear. Uh, six o'clock position has a date wheel, and real quick, I'll just describe some of the features. This outer ring here, the red and black ring, is for the temperature. Obviously, the red indicator on the fourth hand is the north needle and here you can see it says low, half, high tide, and half inside of the dial. You can check the truthaboutwatches.com for a still shot. I'm going to pick the camera up real quick and try to show you the compass feature. When you push the pusher down here, the compass fires up and you can see north is somewhere behind me. Uh, I'd say the compass is fairly accurate. I've checked it against the magnetic compass. I wouldn't want to drive a boat to the Bahamas with only this. But, you know, just for everyday use, it seems to be fine. Um, we'll go back down here now. Shortly, you'll see that the watch, it just beeped. And the watch went back to showing the tide clock, because that was the previous function that I was on. So right now you can see in Destin, Florida, it's going from half to low tide. So this button here does tide. So if we push this top right button, we'll go to temperature. The hand will cycle around, touch the temperature word and show us the current temperature which is evidently 84 degrees uh, that's a little bit ridiculous probably because my hands are touching the back of the case right now I think it's about 72 inside my house so that's not even close um, it's pretty accurate you just have to leave it alone for a minute now what I was saying earlier about it maintaining the previous function is as you see here it's gonna stay on temperature and it's gonna continue to stay on temperature until I push another button it takes a reading once every minute uh, if the temperature starts varying rapidly, it will increase or decrease that accordingly. Uh, so again, if you push the tide button now, the hand will turn around and touch low tide and drive itself back. That's in Florida now, again, half somewhere between half and low tide. So it's pretty cool. It maintains the clock function, or excuse me, the temp function or the tide function at all times until you click the compass. Uh, I personally tend to leave it on tide. I just feel like since all it's doing is making a calculated rotation, it's going to use a lot less battery power than continuing to fire up the temperature sensor every minute. Uh, that may all be in my head, but that's how I feel about it, so that's how I do it. Um, the crown does have a cool feature. It lets you know when you've opened it up, and that's pretty cool. But all of the settings for the temperature and the tide and the compass are used from the crown and also of course the time is set from the crown so when you open the crown up don't hit the buttons because you'll change settings let's uh, check out the loom this watch actually is unique it has loom and uh, indiglo uh, the indiglo seems to be fairly useless I'm not gonna lie um, the illuminated dots are pretty cool actually but the indiglo only works when it's almost pitch black outside um, this particular watch has to be charged for a little bit longer than the others. Uh, Timex just used pretty cheap loom material, which I'm not really surprised by, but uh, just needs a few more seconds than the other watches. Uh, two hours in sunlight gives you about 30 minutes out of this watch. Tops, I'd say more realistically, 
more like 15 or 20 minutes out of the luminous paint, which is pretty crappy. But they did give you the inner glow to back it up. That's why they saved their money. So let's kill the lights. And you can see there, uh, again, it, it's not, uh, you know, it's not terrible. And I do kind of like the color of it. Um, if you can see somewhere right around there, about uh, halfway between 4 and 5 is the north indicator. And obviously you can use the compass at night time and watch that thing spin around. Now this will be the indiglo function, if that showed up at all. Again, not super useful. i hit that again. Uh, it does light up the whole dial, which doesn't seem to be coming through very well on the camera. Let me bring the lights back up real quick. Again, the Indiglo does light up the entire dial. Uh, the inside dial where the half tide markings are here lights up much brighter than the outside dial, but it does light up, although the actual hands, uh, when they're lit up at all from the luminous paint, are a much better function to tell the time. The only time the Indiglo really has proven useful for me is when the hands are completely dead and it's pitch black outside, which has happened a couple times since I've started wearing this watch. So. I won't say it, it's I won't say it's useless because it does have its its uh, uses I suppose. Um, this watch has three variations. There's this one. There's the white face, and there's the white face with the different band. Uh, one of the different bands for the white face is like a leather uh, pleather kind of band, which looks pretty cool. I just happen to like the black on red better than I liked the white on white, so that's why I picked this one. Um, there's not really much else to say about this watch. We're going to learn together here. Water resist 100 meters. Um, I'm not sure if I would really want to test that or not. However, I can say that this thermometer tests water temperature and it tests it pretty accurately. So if you have a pool and you want to know what temperature it is, this would not be a bad way to find that out. Overall, I'd say uh, for $105 brand new, this is a great watch. I just think they're so cool looking. Um, Amazon has them for 105. I picked this one up used for 60. Uh, they're just they're just cool watches. And um, even if it didn't have all those functions, just the generalized design of it's pretty good for me. I just think it looks like a like an airplane, uh, like a gauge in an airplane or something. I just I kind of love it. So uh, it's been a great watch for me. I've had to overlook a couple things, like the fact that the quartz second hand doesn't line up with any of the markers, uh, which usually would make me throw a watch in the trash. But um, I have to say I've been pleased with it and uh, probably I'll end up getting the white on white sooner or later just to complete the collection. Uh, they're great watches if you enjoy the Tide Temp Compass thing like a Casio Pro Trek. This is worth your time. Uh, I guess that's it for today and I'll see you guys next time.